I, I always feel app apprehensive. I think if you're not apprehensive, then there's something wrong. Taliban will probably never get into their heads as the British Army don't give up. Thousands of miles from these shores, a new breed of hero is currently being born. They never grab the headlines like the SAS, and their job isn't as glamorous as fast jet pilots. But without them, the war in Afghanistan could not be fought. They're called the Road Warriors. They go wherever they're needed, delivering supplies to parched, dusty outposts in energy-sapping 50-degree heat. We've got rations in the back now, and it's all the marches on the stomach. They need something inside them. One grueling convoy after another, they face roadside bombs, ambushes, snipers, and suicide bombers in one of the world's most unforgiving environments. They've had a few IED finds. Today, the road warriors are about to depart on one of their most dangerous missions, to the British base called Argyle. It's in an area known as Nadi Ali, in the green zone, the Taliban's home ground. It's their land, it's their home country. They're going to do anything to defend it. We need to stay vigilant. We need to stay on top of it, and we can't get complacent especially, you know, places like this as well. We're going to Nadi Ali now, so it can be quite hairy in there. This will be a particularly risky operation. The trucks will be carrying food, water and ammunition deep into Taliban territory. You feel proud of what you've done as well once you've taken it to them. Private Paul Youngy Young will be manning the machine gun that protects his vehicle. This is going to be quite a hard dot, this one, as well. It's going to be tiring. Youngy's truck is driven by Lance Corporal Robert Smallwoods, a Territorial Army volunteer. Satchel bracket that holds on the night vision goggles. We'll be going out at night. The success of this mission depends on them leaving on time. So it's crucial Smallwoods and Youngy's truck is ready. Waiting to go out about three o'clock. We found the load. Uh, it is a flat rack full of ration packs. But we need to strap it down. Mark Devine is a sergeant with 13 years' service behind him. He's seen action in Kosovo, Bosnia, and Iraq. We'll get it loaded up, get it parked up, ready to go. His co driver is Private Nathan Taft Taylor. He joined the army 18 months ago, and this is his first time in a war zone. Hopefully all goes well now, but Nadi Ali's quite dodgy, but keep on top of it, should, everything should be all right. Mugsy, stand to the side, mate, so he doesn't fucking squash you. He's going to end up coming off. Let's get it up. With every faith that this is going to work. Whoa, whoa, drop it. Around the convoy are force protection a fast mobile unit equipped with heavy caliber weapons. Uh, we've got a Sergeant Major Thrower in a Whiskey 5. Force protection is commanded by Lieutenant Jack Belfield. Jack is already on his second tour of Afghanistan. As per normal, uh, Butch, the JTAC. Lieutenant Chris Butch Butcher calls in the airstrikes that keep the Taliban at bay. The threat's pretty high at the moment. It's going to be a difficult route. The loads include specialist engineer equipment, like this bridge, which is vital if British troops are to stay mobile across the maze of canals in Nadi Ali. Driving this truck is 18-year-old Private Gabby Corliss, the youngest soldier on the operation. Not many 18-year-olds are in the middle of the desert, you know what I mean? It's dangerous around there. It's 2.30 in the afternoon, and the road warriors are ready to leave. A line of 77 vehicles, two and a half miles long, 
snakes through the gates of Camp Bastion into the unforgiving Western Desert. It's now leaving the Bastion 2 gate over. Their destination, the British base Argyle, just 15 miles away. But the round trip will take an agonizing 18 hours. It's like wacky races here, so does. Everyone's going everywhere. They're not going to tarmac the roads anytime soon. Although Jack's vehicle has just struggled through soft sand, the truck behind tries to follow. Well, that moron will go through here now, won't he? What a penis. Sweating too much, really. I'd, I'd, I can't really afford to lose any more weight, so. <laughs> At the front of the convoy, Butch and Jack check the way ahead. And at the rear, young Ian Smallwood struggle to see through the dust and avoid the bumps. Jeez. Eighty percent of British casualties in Afghanistan have been caused by IEDs. That's improvised explosive devices. So the convoy is always on the lookout for these bombs. The guys at the front, they just stopped bombing, so they're just clearing the route just to check we've got no IEDs laying down on the ground. Um, and that'll take them a little while. Op bomber is when metal detectors are used to search for buried bombs. Flash of, uh, flash of with a white and a clear bag surrounding her. Uh, Roger. The road warriors move on, but are warned to avoid the suspected bomb. Suspected IED, uh, a white bag with a coke can on top. One of the boats knock it off, could detonate there. Flexibility is key to the CLPs. They're constantly changing. Uh, vehicles break down, routes have to change, boundaries change, constantly battling uh, to work around a new problem. This is the first time I've been with Youngie. Ah, oh, he's not a bad lad, really. Keeps saying what, doesn't he? Every time I shoot him, he goes, Youngie! What? Do you know what I mean? That's all I get off him. Of. Big and what? They're not travelling for long. They're told to wait in the open desert while the dangerous route into Nadi Ali is cleared. We've got to wait there because the battle group needs to clear our route into Nadi Ali. Um, They've had a few IED finds yesterday. There's not really many things to like about Afghanistan. It's, there is some nice scenery now. Back in the poppy season, it's, it's nice and uh, it's nice and green. I don't think the place is really to be liked, to be quite honest. Three miles ahead is the green zone, where the rivers run and the land is lush and green. It's also the hiding place of the Taliban. The majority of British casualties have been here. The guys know their skills and drills, and, and uh, it's keeping them alive. We have been lucky, but you know we need to stay vigilant. We need to stay on top of it, and we can't get complacent, especially you know places like this as well. We're going into Nadi Ali now, so um, can, it can be quite hairy in there. My wife is an ex-soldier, so she's got a good idea of, of what happens, really. Um, I don't really explain a lot to my, my daughter, she's seven. Um, but all she understands is that I'm coming out here, I'm in big trucks, I drop off loads and I, for people so they can eat and drink, and then I go back and, you know, she, that's as much as she needs to know. We're going to trade. We're going to see what he's got. This is one of the worst ration packs I've ever seen. What the hell is this? Shite. I guaranteed at least one of them ration packs were older than me. Oh, you've got a new one. Bean salad. They're all, they're all new. Beef ravioli. That's OK, look. Like. It's not the sweet and sour chicken I wanted, though, but they'll have to do. Oh, cherry. The Western tuna pasta. That's all right. There's Warmed up already. Seal bar. Oh, yeah. 
bit of Tabasco sauce. The spice and food up. Chicken, tomato sauce, pasta. Yeah. Yeah, so you like it? I'll eat it. <laughs> We're basically waiting here until the last safe moment. We don't want to move down and then for them to find something for us to be stuck outside. So it's a case of uh, hurry up and wait. I was kind of looking forward to coming in here, like, but obviously, like, I was, I was nervous at the same time. But you miss everyone at home. It's probably one of the hardest things I've ever done, like, probably my whole life. So this is their last chance to rest before they enter Nadi Ali, one of the most dangerous places in Afghanistan. Another day, another dollar, eh? What's on, Mum? I've got much on. It's really bad, sir, man. It's about an half hour. We'll be out of here. We probably won't move it, Ed. No, I bet we bloody do. All right, another 12 hours, we'll be finished. Mm. Smash it out. I might be drop load and run. The road warriors have been on the go for 20 hours. They've crossed the treacherous sands of the Western Desert and are now on the edge of the green zone, home of the Taliban. They've had a few IED finds. They're waiting for the signal that their route into the British base called Argyle has been cleared of roadside bombs. If my mum found out I smoked, I'd be in shit. Oh, Go away. She, she'll come out with the phrase of, smoking will kill you when I mean, you just come back from Afghan. Like, All right. I can only assume at the moment that the battle group haven't cleared the route yet, or they're not happy that they've cleared the route properly yet. So until they've cleared it, we're not going to move. Yeah, it, it can get a bit frustrating. Like, guys get tired, really, really tired, and, and that's when, you know, the complacency sort of kicks in. I don't want that to happen. Finally, the road warriors switch their lights to infrared and set off into the night. Hey, off the Argyle, I can barely see the truck in front of me. Never mind the ground that I'm traveling on. Moving off. All right. I'm going the right direction. What? You need to talk to me, man. You need me talking to me. Hi. I can't see anything, like, close up. Soldiers call the area they're about to enter IED Alley. I, I tell my mum and my dad, like, no, not too much, like. I don't think they really understand what's, what's happening. Like, the thing that worries me is like, losing a leg or one arm. Don't, don't fancy losing a limb or anything. It's just known as IED Alley, and there's been loads of IEDs found there and strikes. Butch's vehicle has night driving screens, but all Taff and the other truck drivers have a night vision goggles. Yeah, I'm moving off now. Here we go again. The road warriors have been awake for 24 hours, and sleep deprivation starts to take its toll. Keep an eye in front there, youngie. Hi. You're trying to look at the ground, but it's, it's well too dark, and it's when all the dust is kicking up, it's hard to see the ground, so. Yeah, I'm still tired. <laughs> I've really just got, got to get on with it, because it's, it's not just me, I've got to look after is all the boys there, we've got to get the stuff to deliver. We've got rations in the back now, and it's all the marches on the stomach, they need something inside them. The road warriors are now in one of the most dangerous areas of Afghanistan, Nadi Ali. The, the threat that we've got out on the ground in Nadi Ali, particularly, um, is small arms fire and IEDs. It does worry me. It's, it's our job, so we all get on and do it. On one side is a canal, and there's a very high risk of driving into it. On the other side are compounds, which could hide Taliban snipers. We're going to be driving alongside the um, 
the canal. It's going to be tight, that, so... And that's just probably going to drain me all my energy that I've got left. I'll keep it straight. Can you see the canal? Can you not see it from there? Yeah, is it the canal this side? Canals, that's all. Sort of <laughs> all right, I'll keep left as close. <laughs> yeah. The 30-foot wide canal is right beside Taft's wheels. <sighs> One wrong move and they'll plunge into the water. I'm driving like that, it's quite hard. It's quite nervous. It's the end is my life if we, if we go in the waters. And I'm just trying to get as close to the vehicle in front now, so... Uh, and stay in his track, so... It'll make it easier for me then. Hopefully that the guy in front is uh, going in the right tracks. It's going to take a lot of teamwork between me and Youngie to, uh, to work our way through it. I'm not tired at all, really. It's just six miles to their destination, but the hard going means that the convoy has to make frequent stops. In front of the convoy, Butch is approaching the British base Argyle. We're coming along an area called Shinkalay, which is pretty a rough area. We're coming up past the mosque. We've had several instances about 500 metres, 600 metres past this area to our right. Uh, small arms and other such things. So the boys all know this area well now. But two miles away at the back, Taff follows the tracks of the vehicle in front as it crosses a bridge. And turn, 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 turn. And takes a tight left turn. I can't see the truck. You're way out there, way out. Right, you're gonna have to fuck. Right, okay, go forward. Yeah. Right, hard right, all the way. Onward. It's the wrong turn. They should have carried straight on. But along with two other trucks, Mark and Taff are now on the wrong road. A road that hasn't been cleared of bombs and leads straight towards the Taliban. At the front of the convoy, Butch and Jack have just reached safety at Argyle. But at the back, Smallwoods and Youngie are following the tracks of Mark and Taff. I'm going to clear the bridge. They're about to take the same wrong left turn. Ah, you've cleared that. Straight into enemy territory. Right, you need to keep an eye on the trailer. I can't even see it. Right. <laughs> They're struggling to make the tight left turn. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I'm going to just walk to the back. Keep going, yeah? Keep coming. Because it's taking so long. Message over. A soldier spots them and comes down to find out what's going on. Yeah. That's a place where you need to turn left. It's beyond this junction. You'll come to another bridge, and it's a left-hand turn which you need to take. That'll be easier. Huh? That'll be easier. I'm trying to get around there. Yeah. Just go straight on. Yeah, that, that's the route you're supposed to take. Is it? Yeah. You go north. We've not cleared that route. So Delta 19's went up that way, innit? They're going up a, a route that we haven't cleared. Fucking hell, what a fucking nightmare this is. At the British base Argyle, no one's realised three trucks are missing. Just turned up to Argyle. Better late than never. Slow, hard route, in the dark, difficult driving. Everyone's tired. It's all good. 
For the soldiers in the three lost trucks, the wrong turn has led to disaster. The road Mark and Taft took has collapsed. Fuck. And the vehicle carrying the bridge is in the canal. Now watch your foot in. Sergeant Mark Devine stays calm, but experience tells him they're in an incredibly dangerous situation. Oh, watch yourself. You got your weapon, yeah? Okay, right, guys, get your body armor and helmets on, all right? Get your weapons attached to yourselves. Hello, any Delta call sign? Any Delta call sign? This is Delta 1-9, over. He's desperate to raise the alarm, but they're now out of radio range with the rest of the convoy. I need to get the recovery vehicle up here, all right, to get that out. But you lot, have you got your weapons? Right, get them out, because you're going to need to fucking... Once you turn this round, you need to make sure you keep an eye on what's going on. Mark makes his crucial decision. Well, I've got to head back about two k's down there, all right? Uh, we'll leave one vehicle here with these, and we'll go for the recovery, all right? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hello, any Delta call sign? Any Delta call sign? This is Delta 1-9, over. Right, I've got to leave you on your own for a little bit, right, while I go back and find out where the recovery vehicle is so I can drag that out. The most experienced soldier has to leave the four least experienced soldiers behind. Their job is to defend the trucks, to prevent classified military equipment falling into Taliban hands. But you need to make sure you cover all your angles while I'm out. All right, I'll make sure you look after each other. All right, happy? Right, OK, let's go. Amongst those left behind is the youngest person on the convoy, 18-year-old Private Gabby Corliss. Neither she nor the other three have ever been in a situation like this before. Mark and Taft drive as fast as they can, in the dark, on a road that still hasn't been cleared of roadside bombs. Hello, any Delta call sign? Any Delta call sign? This is Delta 1-9, over. But their radio is still out of range. I'm passing the ditch. Soon, it'll be dawn, and the Taliban will realize British soldiers are stranded on their doorstep. Two miles away at Argyle, the trucks are still coming in. The convoy is a slow-moving desert snake of 77 vehicles. They still haven't realized three trucks are missing. Jack is checking all the trucks are accounted for. But because the convoy is so long, no one can be sure that all the trucks are in. What is going on? What is going on? I would like to know what is going on. Supposedly, we've lost some lorries. Well, they went, so is that everyone in? And they went, oh, well, yeah, I think so. Yeah. so. Is it a thing, so is it a fucking no so? The LA's not here, and the log commander's fucked off. Wow. In Afghanistan, two British Army trucks are stranded. One in a canal. Fuck. And they're being defended by four young soldiers. You lot, have you got your weapons? Well, get them out. Mark and Taff are racing back to base to raise the alarm before the sun rises and the Taliban attack. Smallwoods, who nearly took the wrong turn, is ahead of them and almost at Argyle. The vehicles took the wrong route, turned a sharp left. By the time I managed to try and turn myself, which is going to be a nightmare, an infantry man came up and said to me, they shouldn't have, shouldn't have went left. They went on their route that hasn't been checked. So the possibilities for IEDs is a hell of a lot greater, not more dangerous. We cleared the bridge. You're making it, mate. You're making it. As soon as he arrives, Smallwoods tells the convoy commander, Major Rob Tasker, that the back of the convoy went the wrong way. And sir, okay. see once we crossed that we narrow bridge? Yeah. They all went left. OK, let's have a look at the map. All right, we'll do what you can. Try and establish cones and tell them to stop. 
Right, where have they gone? Yeah, Which... we turned left at 26. They went yeah. left there then. They went up 20. With dawn breaking, Jack's force protection platoon are preparing to go to the rescue. I like my day every day going to look for vehicles which are lost. Belfield is uh, raging at the present moment. It's still raging. <laughs> and then Mark and Taff arrive with news of the desperate situation the four soldiers are in. Well, we need to get in there now. We've got one in the canal. It's in the canal. It's in the canal. Delta 1, Delta 1, 7. Delta 1, 6 is with it. There's four guys there. We've just come back. Delta 1, 7's in it. Delta 1, 6 is with them. Just loop round, mate, and just park up behind that one. Instead of following the orders process where get lost, go firm, they decided to take their, uh, their chances up a random road, um, which is an ID city. We're now currently trying to ascertain where they are. We've got no comms with them, so they're just going around on their own, really. Um, we're trying to work out where they are, what they're doing, and uh, what best to do about it, really. Not an ideal situation. Delta 1, survey, put it in canal. All right, and then someone's down in canal. It never rains, but it pours. Force protection sets off. The soldiers have been stranded for half an hour. If I didn't leave them to come here and get these guys, they'd be sat there all day, so, so I had to do something. But there's four of them there, they're all trained, they've got a big gun and they've all got their own guns, so they'll be okay for the, you know, for the next 10 to 15 minutes they've got to hold out, half an hour tops, and somebody's, somebody else is going to be there to help them. The time is running out. The rescuers move slowly, checking for booby traps. It'll be another half an hour before they arrive. And the Taliban have launched their attack. What we've done is we've sent out two women crews, four protection crews. They've gone down there uh, and they've been, been engaged with contact. What was on fire, but I don't know how that was caused. That's definitely from the enemy. A vicious firefight has started. Butch calls in two attack helicopters. We're looking to engage foreign point. A widow, a 6 8, a clear to engage. The Taliban have hit one of the trucks with rocket propelled grenades. The firefight is escalating. One is currently on fire. But now that was hit by enemy rounds. The other vehicle was left as it was in the killing zone. We're clear to engage. We've lost comms with uh, the ground call signs, therefore we've got to urge extreme caution with exactly what we do. If we can look to cover our guys on the extraction out, uh, looking out to the uh, east, uh, where the uh, firing points are coming from. The four young soldiers are still holding out. And now they have backup from force protection and Apache helicopters, known as ugly call signs. Roger, uh, Radio Call Sign is obviously now talking to the ugly call sign uh, and is looking into depth positions for you, over. Are you currently engaging any enemy forces, over? I'm currently suppressing the fire positions that was opened up on. My uh, friendlies are engaging uh, to the east uh, along them uh, uh, compounds and they have received uh, a sprouting fire over there engaging back. How come? Faced with the overwhelming firepower of force protection and the Apaches, the Taliban retreat. Now two ugly call signs in the air. Uh, one will be covering the area from which the uh, fire is coming from, and the second one will cover your extraction. We need to move out of this uh, area pretty fast because we're very low on ammo. Over. Those shots that you put down were exactly in and around uh, the areas uh, that they were getting uh, engaged from. That's fucking awesome, it was from the near and far compounds and also the tree lines that surround both those compounds. Any more fire comes in, uh, we'll look to get shots into that location. 
Meanwhile, the spy plane looks for the Taliban fighters. There's a drop to be on fire. Be on fire for 45 minutes. Um, and then there's one in the canal. Get down the office. The rescue party move in to help the stranded soldiers before the Taliban have time to launch another attack. Mark waits to hear if anyone's been injured. After a heavy firefight, everyone makes it safely to the base. They were still in the trucks trying, yeah. to, trying to fight. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah good fantastic. Cover and fire and got them out. Yeah, it is amusing how they managed to take that turning, isn't it? I've got four, four people in a, in a mastiff that shook up to fuck, sir. We right. just chucked them in the canal and then carried on the firefight. It's all good fun, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking waters and everything. Uh, what a day, eh? Drops, you know when you come down, I feel uh, fucked, I really do feel in, so uh, tired. Uh, the adrenaline was pumping like fuck. Uh, <sighs> the four young soldiers fought a ferocious battle. And for Gabby, now the adrenaline has stopped pumping, the emotion kicks in. It's not your fault. It's no one's fault. It happened, all right? It happens. No, it's no one's fault, right? You took a wrong turn, everyone else followed. All right, even me, I'll follow you down. You're all, you're all alive, you're all in one piece, you're all back here. Just about. All right, and fourth section, got to smash them. Oh, well, they're back in one piece, so I'm happy, yeah. They're a bit shaken, so um, it's not easy when it happens, especially some of these guys that never happened to them before in their life, so, um, you know, it's the first time it's happened, so they're, they're all right, they've done well, they've done really well. Uh, they're all back in one piece. I was scared, really scared, like, because I didn't know what to do. If false protection didn't come, I don't know what we would have done. They saved our lives, basically. Staff Sergeant Justin Simons was one of the reinforcements. Probably one of my main concerns was the fact that, you know, I could have lost one of them at any particular point. It was just trying to get the four uh, out of the killing zone. Against all odds, Private Edwin Motetti bravely kept the Taliban at bay until help arrived. Taliban were waiting, first light to come out, to check me out. The other picture just hit the truck behind the, 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 the windscreen, and the truck started burning. Ting, 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 small arms. So I waited for 10, 10 15 seconds, get down. This is my bad boy. Bam, 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 bam. It's not pink and fluffy all the time, is it? It's a dangerous world, but everyone's there to look out for each other, so everyone looks after each other like a big family. Fortunately, the four soldiers were unharmed. The truck hit by rocket-propelled grenades burned to the ground. The classified material was recovered, and the truck in the canal was towed along with the bridge to Argyle. The road warriors have now dropped their loads and are ready to leave Argyle. We had accidents and small out on fire at the same time. So, yeah, it brings us to home. It brings us to light to all of us, I think. Really? It is dangerous out here, but we've got to get it done. I wish you could see where you're going there. Just keeping an eye out in case anything uh, suspicious happens. Two hours later, they've reached the edge of the green zone, almost out of Taliban territory. The convoy has a few minutes to wait before they get the all clear. We've got some small arm fire coming from the rear. For the second time this morning, they're under attack. Right, get out there, mate. Get on the gun. Just make... Fuck it out. Just keep your eyes peeled, Taff, yeah? Can you see the firing point, can you? No, no. There's too many vehicles in the way. From where I can 
see from here, and judging by the amount of fire that we've just returned, I think it's coming from the tree line over uh, to our right hand side. Do you see him in the tree line over there? If he's armed, I am just looking to see if he's armed. All right, now hold your fire, don't be firing. Oh, we've got one down over there. Jack fire! Jack fire! See where that man is? Yeah. If you come two fingers, there's yeah. a man moving through the trees in a fucking rapid rate. Same. Is he down? Yeah, I think he went down, yeah. Seems to have been suppressed for the minute. Just keep an eye on what you can see. There's no way they've, they've gone right. They must have peeled off left. Left that side compound movement! The threat is raised when a man starts walking towards the convoy. They made him strip his clothes to make sure he, didn't, he wasn't a suicide bomber, and now they've called him forward. It could be a civilian, it could be a farmer. To find out if he's Taliban or just an innocent farmer, his hands are swabbed to see if he's been firing a weapon. It turns out the man is an innocent civilian herding his goats, right in the middle of a firefight. He's running around here in the middle of it to us. It's unbelievable. To be under fire for the first time is a learning curve. From this position where we are, there's not a lot we can do. But the force protection guys that we've got up on the Mastiff have obviously got eyes on from where they are so they can engage. Butch has seen the enemy. Yeah, right through the middle, you see a gap in the wood line, right in the yep. far distance. That's where we, they were, three packs. Okay. It does get a bit fruity around here. We have got a lot of firepower with us. Hopefully that's a deterrent enough and we can get our job finished and get back. Hopefully. We're on the outside of him on, on the actual... For the second time today, Butch calls in the Apaches. Now that east to west running wood line is where the Pats uh, engaged us from. Yeah, Pats engaged. OK, we've positively identified where the firing point is. Uh, we're going to move on to the road and head back that any moment now. And obviously, if any small arms comes in, we'll engage. Let's hope not. Once again, the Apaches and force protection have driven off the Taliban. Oh, Twitch here, will they? I thought he would let a couple of rounds off, you know. Fuck it. Are you, are you ready to get some? Get some more. <laughs> some rounds down. It's been a long, difficult mission. And now the road warriors are heading home. Young A, what? Have you got your game face on? I'll game face you in a minute. <laughs> Do you know, you must have seen my name about 600 times in like 24 hours. What'd you say, Young A? I'm not speaking anymore. You love it. You're just a big bender, you. Hopefully, no more small arms fire, breakdowns, canal ditching. We've had enough for one day. Nice and smoothly, smoothly across the desert, back at the bastion. I see a lot of fields with weed in them. So, they're definitely, there is, there is a change slowly happening. This country would be, would be amazing, like, if, if it wasn't for the issues that it has. Going well now. It's been, I'd say, about 10, 15k from Bastion. Shouldn't take too long, I don't think. Bastion! 
That means food, shiver, bedtime. Two sleepless nights, basically. Came under two contacts. It's been an exciting trip. Life is top colour, it's rough as hell. I've probably got a few bumps and bruises. Yeah, no doubt. It feels great to get back to Bastion. It's your home from home. You've done everything the CLB wanted to do. There no casualties. I'd rate this one being maybe the hardest one. Fatigue and driving at night. Everyone knuckled down, got on with the job and got the job done. Got our, all our loads delivered. And everyone's coming home now, safe and sound. It's good to be back. So you were, the Colonel just says, well done on the route, really quick on the way back. What did you take, the M3? That motherfucker was cheeky. That was a cheeky little number, mate, on it. Um, it was the worst one we've done so far, I think. Send it be through, you didn't know. Yeah. That's all on. Losing that vehicle down in the ditch. That, that was... Then the was... RPG at the other one. Yeah, RPG the other one. We've got all the trucks bar one back. Everybody's back safe. Yeah. And that's the main good, thing. Good team it? effort, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, success. See, up here we're successful. After the shower, I'll be in that, I'll be in that camp, can't sleep in. I'll have in all my kit, clean my rifle, uh, have a shower, have a shave, and then it's, uh, it's time for a bit more head down on the pillow for the next 12 hours at least, I think. It's all fighting to get more and more sleep. That's all we want. The biggest trouser fill up was when the they landed turn. in the canal. Oh yeah, the wrong turn. Yeah. Well, they took that wrong turn, they landed in that canal. We had to we had to think fast on our feet and we had to think of something to do. It was an easy mistake for the guys to make. Um, but it could have been a deadly one. After a gruelling four and a half months on tour, Mark gets to return home to his family in Oxfordshire for two weeks leave. The hardest part of Mark being away would just be the hugs and the kisses and the laughter and things the like that. The storytelling. And the storytelling. <laughs> Daddy sent me here to look after me and remind me of Daddy. Yeah. Here. We've got two weeks planned of just relaxing at home, enjoying Daddy's company. Yeah, we're just going to do lovely family stuff for two weeks. It's Daddy! Go on, then, Mark, Dad! <laughs> it's so good to see you. It's good to be back. You can get back here and relax for a bit and a couple of weeks for yourself. But in just two weeks, he'll be back in Afghanistan. Next time on Road Warriors. What was that? Can you hear me? That sounded like an AD, that. Mate, it's lost comms. That's what worries me about this. We've got the same country. It's just about your truck and up you go. Scary, innit? <laughs>